So here I'm just using my miter saw to cut some walnut down to a rough size. Next I moved on to the jointer. I jointed the face side which took a couple passes before doing the side which took uh, three or four passes. I love the Powermatic jointer. It leaves an incredible finish and it's always square. I cleaned up the remaining face with a few passes on the jointer. I squared up the one remaining edge on the table saw. Off camera there, I ripped the board into four pieces that are an inch and a quarter by about 22 inches long. I took the four pieces and broke them down into 16 pieces using mitered cuts. They all fit pretty well on a dry fit up. I was happy with that. I probably should have put the detail on the walnut before I got it all broke down into teeny pieces, but I didn't do that. I don't have a plan here. It's kind of going, uh, going with the flow. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This time it worked, I got through the all the little pieces and I didn't have any big blowout. I'll need to do a little hand sanding work to some of the detail and that's fine. It's always expected, um, but yeah, it turned out good. I use acetone to clean my joints before I do a glue up. Uh, I do think it really helps and uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm preparing these little, uh, I don't even know what I'm going to call it, a little box, preparing it for glue up. Using a combination of tape and clamps, I got it glued up a little janky, but it'll work. The glue for the little panels is drying, but uh, that's not going to stop me from moving forward. Right now I am back on the mill. Uh, we got to mill down some curly maple. I love curly maple, I love walnut, I hope they go good together. So yeah, we're going to get it joined down, planed, and probably over onto the table saw or the miter saw to start cutting some pieces. Oh, I love the look of curly maple once it starts cleaning up. Two pieces of maple, ready to work. I'm getting ready to resaw the maple. I need four pieces, so right here I'm putting in a center line. That big band saw that I was just standing in front of is for resawing. Unfortunately, it has a scroll saw blade on it right now, and I didn't want to go through the changing and adjusting to get the resaw blade cutting right, so I used the table saw. A little rough, but they'll work. To hold that beautiful maple I just cut, I'm putting a rabbit into the back side of these little boxes or frames. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing here. Using some chisels, I did square the rabbit joint. Uh, I, I, I did this to give the panel that's gonna go inside of it a little better of a glue bond. And uh, hopefully it works and doesn't come apart or come off. What am I doing here? Ah. It looks like I'm cutting the panels down to their final size so they fit into that rabbit. In addition to the burn marks from the bandsaw, they are a hair too wide. Why use a table saw when hand planes are just funner? I took two light passes on the block plane, slid it in there, and it fits good. I'm happy with that. So I've been uh, making some progress, having some fun. I've got a dry fit on this little box thingy. It looks pretty good. I haven't really made any big mistakes yet, but uh, that changes pretty soon. I'm 
working on some panels for the top and bottom of the little box I just created and I decided to use the biscuit joiner to help alignment when I glued this thing together. It worked really well. And this is where the mistake started. Initially it was going well. I was using my table saw to make some mitered spline joints. Uh, the middle one went fine, but then I was trying to do some angled ones and didn't turn my box the right way and made a big mistake. I was going to throw my piece away, shut my camera off, but I decided to follow through with it. I cut some splines, put them in there, glued them up, cut them flush. I got the piece sanded down, and though it uh, certainly wasn't what I was going for, it doesn't look that bad. All right, we are back to work. Um, again, I, I kind of talked about this already. The spline design is not what I was going for. I made a mistake, it was my fault. Uh, we'll call it a random uh, spline design pattern. Uh, right now, I've got the panels. I'm gonna get these uh, squared up, sanded down. I'll probably put a profile on the edges. I'm gonna get it attached the way that I want and start constructing this thing from the ground up. And uh, really looking forward to uh, what I'm gonna do here. I've just got some ideas, uh, no real plans, just uh, going with the flow. I made the top to match the bottom just a little smaller. I used a combination of glue and dowels to hold the top in place. Here I'm pre-cutting a dado for the back because it would be really hard to do after the bandsaw work. I also drilled a relief hole, which will really help when I get over to the bandsaw. Yeah, okay. So I drilled four relief holes. Two by 72 knife grinder for the win. Here I am using a flush trim bit on the router and making a duplicate piece. Oh, that's a, that's a great angle. Uh, here I'm just using the router again to put some style on the two pieces I just cut. Just another dry fit up here. I did add some inlays to the front and back of that back panel. I'll have to show you what I'm going to use these for later. It was very cold out and I did not stay in the shop long. And this was the first time that I have cut miter joints on a bandsaw. Well today was not nearly as productive as I wanted it to be. It was my first time uh, cutting miters on a bandsaw. Never had to do that before so uh, it worked well. Um, we'll see how well when I put the next pieces in but uh, it, it, as far as today um, I really wanted to get that middle piece done. It is not. Uh, I got it glued up but it still needs a lot of work. I've got some other pieces to add to it. It's just too cold. Uh, I think we're gonna break record record cold temperatures here where I'm at today. Uh, it was in the single digits uh, up until the afternoon, eight or nine degrees, and right now it's about 17 degrees. Uh, it might not look like it, but it is it is cold. So I've been working around my little space heater back there, but we're shutting down. Uh, we're going to call it a day. It'll be a few days before I get back out here, and uh, maybe we'll finish the middle section next time.
So we are back to work. I did uh, put some dowels in here. They're maple dowels, which should match the rest of the maple that I'm using. And the pieces that I told you I'd talk about later are right here. There's a few of them. I cut them on a dry fit and they fit perfect. Uh, but after glue up, uh, they're a little too loose. So that's not gonna work. I'm gonna start redoing this, uh, these inner trim pieces. Not gonna film that, I already filmed it once, but we'll get this buttoned up and uh, hopefully bring you back soon. Finally, uh, I am done with the bottom section there, the middle section's done, and I am ready to move on to the top section. I just did something really stupid while I was cutting through this next top piece and I cut through a biscuit. I could uh, patch it, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna call it character and make sure it's facing the back. Another thing I decided not to do as I got going was I resawed some uh, little veneer out of curly maple and I was going to put it on the inside of those holes and then drill a whole bunch of little holes in it because this clock, the mechanism has a speaker and it actually dings or dongs or whatever, whatever clocks do but uh, I, I don't like that. I think I'm gonna find something else to do there or just leave them open. So the idea of this hole that I cut here is that should be where the components hang down and this little thing should connect about right here. It's kind of funny how much time I've spent working on this little thing to have this little to show for, but you know, I, uh, I didn't have a plan. I'm just going uh, from ideas and it, and it does take time. So I have made a lot of progress despite uh, the fact that it doesn't look like that. If I can get out here at a decent time tomorrow, you know, I might have I might have this pretty close to uh, just the finish work. It's 5.30 here and uh, I'm gonna call it a night. So this is a little test fit, a dry run, and I was happy. This was my first time seeing it swing under its own power. To help the back where the components are going to be, I put a chamfer, a 45 degree chamfer on the inside of it to help it come on and off more easily. I had a hard time deciding if I wanted a maple or walnut border around the clock. I went with walnut. Well, bummer. I really wanted to finish this today. I just got off to a, a late start. So uh, unfortunately, I'm just waiting for glue to dry. That's a delicate glue up I just did, and I don't want to force it early, so it's going to go on to another day. The good news is I am, I'm done. The only thing I need to do is clean a little bit of finished sanding and uh, pretty much put this thing together. So it will be done very soon. All right, so I am in the house. It's uh, getting a little late. It's getting a little cold outside, but I've got all these pieces finished. I'm going to uh, use a tack cloth or two 
and clean all the remaining dust off these pieces. Then I'm going to finish them using Rubio Mono Coat. And I should be able to uh, get this thing put together and get the components kit installed. I've got a cool little design piece right here that you haven't seen yet. I've got this Rubio, uh, this is Rubio Mono Coat Pure. I've got it mixed thoroughly. I'm gonna finish it piece by piece, starting with the small things, then I'll get into the detail work. So this is kind of uh, an exciting moment for me. I've spent, uh, you know, about a month working on this, not like because it, it took that long, it's just the time that I had to come out here and work. I'm going to start assembling this thing. I have designed it so I can break it down and take it apart if I need to. But we're going to start uh, getting this thing assembled. I got my screws, my Z-clips, everything I need to assemble it. We're going to get it assembled. When I bring you back, it's going to be the final piece. So hopefully it looks good and works right. So I had a lot of fun making that little clock behind me. Uh, that's not its final resting spot. I actually don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I do know I'm probably going to eliminate the little dinging. I'm gonna disable the dongs if it's gonna stay in this house. It's really annoying, but a lot of fun. Gonna clean the shop, figure out what I wanna build next. Cheers.